All right, so if you look into the network folder, you will see a brand new uh, class folder, MAD3. If you go into MAD3, for the moment what's in there is the syllabus, which we just looked at, and then a folder, JSON 2017, 0727 start. You want to copy that folder to your desktop or flash drive. And we will, we will work with it. We won't, we won't need, um, we won't need uh, a device or anything like that. You'll just need that folder, JSON start. In that folder are just a bunch of images, nine images. We'll see what they're used for a little later. Um, but once you've copied that folder, let's go to the web browser. Let's go to the website json.org, json.org. JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, is a lightweight data interchange format. It is easy for humans to read and write. It's easy for machines to parse and generate. It's based on the subset of JavaScript from 1999. JSON is a text format that is completely language independent, but uses conventions that are familiar to programmers of the C family of languages, including C, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Perl, Python, etc. These properties make JSON an ideal data interchange language. So how many of you before this class, part one, two, or three, had heard of JSON? JSON. A few people. Most of you not. Okay, JSON is a very common format nowadays for data interchange. It's a way, basically, oftentimes for one website or app to communicate with another, to pass information from one to the other. Think about the use case of uh, our app, the comic book database, is going to hold a bunch of data about comic books. And perhaps I want to store that data on a database. Perhaps we set up the project on a device and a user downloads their, our app to their device. And the next year they buy a brand new phone. Well, when they reinstall the app onto their new phone, I want that data to migrate from their old phone to the new phone. So I need a way to transfer the data. I need a way to deal with the data, just about any kind of data. Twitter and Facebook and every big website nowadays also uses this or speaks this language. It's not really a language, it's a, it's a way to notate, uh, notate information. It's a way to collect information, like a database, for transference and for reading it. JSON is built on two structures, a collection of name and value pairs. In various languages, this is serialized as an object, record, struct, dictionary, hash table, etc., and an ordered list of values. In most languages, this is realized as an array, a vector, a list, or a sequence. So this is the official documentation of what JSON is. And this schematic, when you first look at it, maybe kind of looks confusing, but the idea is an object of data is encompassed between curly brackets. We've seen curly brackets a lot before when we create functions. JSON data is simply data in a certain format, for example, in wrapped around curly braces, and then there's a string and a value, or a key and a value, a pair, something, colon, something. We're going to write some JSON in a little bit, but think about it in terms of here's an object for a user in my in my app. Username, password, comma, last name, Smith, comma, first name, uh, John, comma, email, colon, John at John.com, comma. So it's just a way to um, represent data in a very simple way. Because it's simple, it means that 
most languages can can work with it. JavaScript, for example, C sharp. It's a way to represent this data, and it can hold a variety of kinds of data. String data, number, objects, arrays, booleans, null. So number data, etc. And then there's a section on well, how does it how does it work specifically if you if you're going to program something in Perl? How does it work in C? How does it work in JavaScript, Python, Ruby, etc.? So the way we will um, kind of wrap our heads around this is this is what's the language that we're going to use when we create our database. We're going to save data in an interchangeable format. We're going to save the data of these comic books, the publisher, the title, the number, the picture of the comic, all of that information saved in a format like this. To get acclimated with this inside of the JSON start folder that I just gave you, inside of that folder um, you can right click, select new text document, So right click new text document and let's call this uh, my first JSON dot JSON. So right click create new file, new text file, and rename it whatever dot JSON. My first JSON dot JSON. When you press enter it'll say, are you sure you want to change the extension? Yes. You want to change it to dot JSON. And you want to right click it and open it in Notepad. Text Wrangler? In the JSON format? What do you mean? Does it automatically come with it? Possibly. Huh, I, I, had, I hadn't noticed very recently. I hadn't used Text Wrangler very recently. But I don't doubt it. It's a very common format nowadays, so I, I, I don't doubt that that would be the default. So then after you create the file, right-click, edit with Notepad++. So we've got a JSON file, uh, just to confirm also, uh, you can go up to Language Menu, sometimes it doesn't do this. Go to Language Menu and select JSON, J, JSON. Okay, so JSON data can be read by any kind of computer. Yes? If you open it in uh, Notepad++, plus plus, yes. I have a Notepad to here. What's that? What's the question? Well, it's not a folder. You need to create a file, not a folder. So. Uh, JSON data can be read by Mac, Windows, Android, Linux, etc. It's basically plain text, but it's in a specific format. So, for example, when we create your file here, we're going to start off with the open and close curly braces. Everything inside of this, this then means this is JSON data inside of the curly braces as the example in quotes, double quotes, I can write last name colon quotes your last name Smith. This is Jason. Jason can be very simple or very complex and when you get to when we get to like the app we're going to create later, it'll be more complex. And when you want to make an app, let's say you want to make your own Twitter app. 
Twitter gives you the ability to plug into their huge database of all of the tweets, of the billions of tweets, trillions, whatever. And Twitter will give you the data of tweets in JSON format. It'll just be in a very complex, structured way, but it's going to be plain text. Comma, space, quotes, first name, colon, your first name. These can be named however we want, but as we've been doing it with other uh, with the JavaScript we've written, we're following the same sort of idea that we have the lowercase, the first letter lowercase, and the second uppercase. This would work just fine if it was also like that last name, or if it was last name. But the big idea is no spaces. Case does matter, uh, but we're just following the convention we've used before that the second letter or third letter is going to be capitalized for readability. Comma, space, quotes, password, PWD, password, colon, password, cats, 99, really, really good password. So this is JSON data. Now, for the moment, we're going to write JSON data that is actually not valid so that we can understand it. And then I'll show you what validity is. The first thing about validity is comments are not allowed. I just wrote a comment, but a comment is not allowed. But I'm going to write a comment so you can understand that comments are not allowed. Even if I write it this way, comments are not allowed. Again, this thing that we're, this is just going to be a quick throwaway file. We're not really going to use it for real. Uh, we're going to use a real file in a moment. Comments are not allowed in JSON files. I'm not even going to bother writing comments. The comment marker. No, I guess I will. But we want to say also. Um, set up in uh, key value pairs. So it's something colon something. Something at the front, something at the end. Go ahead and have a seat for the moment. Something colon something. So last name, first name. A pair of things must use double quotes. Not single quotes. Must separate Separate, 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 separate um, each key value pair with comma until the last one. No comma. That's what I have up here. I have this info. This is a unit, comma, something else, comma, the last one, no comma. And all of that is one JSON object. May break up the lines for readability. So let's say we'll do it like this. I'll go to the end of the document, and again I'll start my JSON object, but this time I'm going to break it into multiple lines. It's going to be an item here. Is it 
in one document or will only be one folder per request? Correct. Yes. Let's write that down. One document should have only one. Should have only one curly bear curly brace pair. This again, this this is not valid JSON at all. We're just kind of using it as a scratch pad to write some notes and get the concept. And then we'll write a real JSON file uh, in a moment to do something real. So let's say here I'm going to define more of like a person. Let's say a, a medical record of a person. So between the curly braces, I'm going to tab for readability and type, um, I'll do last name again. I can do a space there, quotes, as comma. What's that? The, the two pair is the one we want, yes, the double quote. The no. single quote is the one we don't want. No, curly braces. Oh, curly braces, yes, exactly. Exactly, we should only have one. It, it should be the first one that I started, and we should add more to it. It's a throwaway document, so I'm kind of like, just imagine that this was in its own document by itself. Now again, this right here won't matter, but this this is very common. Up on the first example, I did not have spaces. I had the key and the value, and in between the colon is necessary, but I didn't put spaces. Here I did, and I put extra spaces here just for readability. This doesn't matter, but this is going to make your data look a lot more readable. Don't matter. Exactly. Outside of the quotes, the spaces don't matter. If I had a space inside of last name, it would matter, and it would it would see and read and store and want to do something with that space. Because a space is not nothing. A space is ASCII character 32, so it is something. Anything outside of the quotes doesn't matter. Yes? So let's say here we want to store um, street address, uh, or their, their address. A person's address is made up of several fields, isn't it? So let's do this. We'll say address, colon. Well, an address has a, has a street, has the number the zip code, and all of that. So now suddenly, I need to define address as a collection of more data. Last name is just last name. First name is just first name. Ages is age. But address must be more data. So we can put a JSON object in a JSON object. Now I need to group some data all related to this one key, this one I think the json.org also calls that as a property. Is that what it said, property? Uh, string value, key value, uh, name value. Name or value pair. I often call it key and value pair because uh, key is often the, the word used in many other kinds of databases. So set up in a key value pair or I guess officially the documentation says name, name and value pair. So there's some key, there's some name, some value. This will be JSON, and this will be exactly the same. Something colon something, comma, something colon something, comma, until the final one. So this I can also break up. So wouldn't that be more than one pair? It's kind of like a new document inside of a document. It will be more than one pair, but this is valid 
uh, this is a complete collection of data in a database, let's say. And the first one was as well. That's not valid. But this is valid because I've got this data associated with this one value. Um, so as we like part of the key. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. This can exist as another pair, another because it's a value of the key of address. By by not associating this data with this data, that's invalid. But this data will be associated with this key, and that is valid. Here I can set up then to say uh, number. Because it's a number, I can write you know one, two, three. I'll explain why not quotes in a moment, comma, street, name, street. What are the other items in, a, in the usual address? City. City. And zip code. City, state, zip. Yeah, so I'll go back on that. State. Just do CA, California, whatever, and then zip. Okay, so this is a JSON object <clears throat> in, a, in a name and value pair. This was simple data. This is defined as that, and this and there. And this is all of this info. So all of this is grouped together here. Now, I wrote number without quotes, and I wrote zip without quotes. The documentation says we can store string data, which is in quotes, or number data, which shouldn't be in quotes. So technically, that 32 is not the number 32. It's the word 32, which is technically different than the number 32. Let's see. We can store text or string, strings in quotes, number, no quotes, start data, data types, text, number, boolean, what's boolean, <coughs> what's boolean, heard of that term boolean? It's basically true or false. True or false. And I think also null. JSON.org says all the proper data types. But usually you're going to be storing things either as a string, so in quotes, the word Alvarez, the word 32, or numbers, the number 123, or the number. 9,919 or zip code 91919. So we'll go back here and remove the quotes on that one. We want the number 32. The number 32. If 32, if the number 32 plus the number 1, if we <coughs> add it, it'll be 33. But if the word 32, we add it to the word 1, we get 321. Uh, remember about words with the plus symbol are added together as a string, but numbers with the plus symbol are added together as numbers. And it'd be nice to be able to write a comment here, but we have no comments in a real JSON file.
if we wanted to then, um, we're not in the right kind of file, but if we were writing JavaScript, this is not a JavaScript file, this will not work if we run it, but if we wanted to do console output, um, to that object, basically then we'd say last name. Well, we'd say the name of the file. Let's let's just say to keep it super simple. In this file, you know, uh, in this object, data dot last name. Let's say this data was stored in a file called data dot json to simplify it very very simple if all of this was in a file called data dot json okay log what's in the data object dot last name give me what's stored in last name in theory this will show what's being currently saved in data dot last name data dot h Right, it would output to the console what is currently saved in H. If I were then to do data.address, it would try to give me the whole block of data. But I want specifically the city. Dot city. So sort of I'm <coughs> connecting to the whole data file. I'm looking in the address field in the address key, in the address name, and then I'm looking inside of the city field, give me what's in there. So this, um, this is a more complex JSON object. All of this, however, defines one one person, one record, one collection of data for one for one entity. So when I press this data, does it mean the file or the name of the object? I'm simplifying it a lot, but for the moment, think about it as the name of the file. Yeah. We're going to set up a way in HTML, in JavaScript, to connect to the JSON file to help us grab the data. And we're going to simplify that by calling it data, or info, or database, or whatever. So this is the name of the object of all of that. And then we can get the sub-elements. Yes? <laughs> Good point, yes, I missed that. We needed a comma there, because we have this pair, comma, pair, comma, pair, comma, another pair, comma, final pair, no comma. So good point, we need the comma. Question is, yes. Alex? When we deal with other people's code, we definitely want to read the documentation first, because I wouldn't want to assume that. But oftentimes, like if it's coordinates, that is a number and not a string. So I want to, I would want to pass that in as a as a number. Um, but I would say really, I'd read the documentation first of Google to confirm what is it expecting in what sort of format data type. If we define our own data structure, then we are going to set up, well, we expect a number to go in this field, and a string to go in that field, and a Boolean to go in another one. So we would define our own sort of data structure. Let's do a more complex one over here. Again, this, is, this file is invalid. We're just doing it as a playground. But let's imagine that now we create a brand new JSON file all by itself, we have the curly braces. Nothing else is in the file except this collection of curly braces. And let's say I want to um, 
um, start off by saying users. Above was only one collection of data for one user. Let's look at how we can set this up to deal with multiple users. It's going to be again a key and value pair or a name and value pair. Then what we will do here is start an array. An array, remember, is a collection of variables. I'm going to break those brackets and then start an object. Let me just show it, let me just show it to you like this for a moment. Complex JSON data. Has one name or key, users, but many user objects stored as an array. So this is a JSON object, and this imagine is everything we typed up there. The last name, the first name, the age, the address within those multiple sub-elements, number, state, zip code, etc. Imagine all of that data then is in here. And this is the first user. Comma. All those fields up there for the second user. Comma. All those fields up there for the third user. No comma because it's the final data. Let's say at the end of that line, I have a comma, enter, and then I have quotes, admins, colon, array, two admins. have then here dozens or hundreds or thousands of lines of code all associated with users. I have here hundreds of lines of code all associated with admins. And inside of this pair of curly braces is all of the information of one of the admins and the other admin. There is a comma right here because again technically all of this is one key and value pair. And then this other one is another key and value pair, and it's the last one, so there's no final comma. That's what we have up here. Key, value, pair, comma. Pair, comma, pair, comma. Final pair, a more complex pair, no comma. Key and value pair, comma. Let's say we have a whole new set of data of this you know social network kind of app so another comma and this time is called banned users so this then is a list of all the users that have been banned in this network or whatever we're creating So all the valid users are within that block of data, all the admins are in that other block of data, and then all the banned users are in that block of data. 
in JavaScript, let's say I wanted to display console.log. Show me a list of all the band users. So I would do data dot band users. And this would um, list all the band users. It would show me everything in this array, which has, in this case, five band users. From the data from the file, give me from the field of band users everything in there. Yes? So with the console log, we don't really use in the JSON file. That's how. We just put it in the HTML file or the JavaScript, the JavaScript file. file. Yeah, so this if we run it, it won't work. And we should not put cons we should not put JavaScript in a JSON file. But this is one way to you know see the data that we've written here. So it shows all the users in the band user field. Shows all the records, let's say. Console.log. Let's say I wanted to see uh, data of one particular one, the first band user. Show me the data of the first band user. Data dot band users, square brackets, zero. Uh, and a, an array is a, is a collection of information in sequential order starting from zero. So this first user here is zero. Again, this is not valid. We would not write this for real. But just to visualize what we're working with, if I want to get the information of the first band user, I don't put a number one there. That'll be the second one. We start counting most of the time with zero in most programming languages, the zero with item. So if I want to show the first band user, it's position zero. So it will then show me all of the data found in there. If I wanted to see, okay, so this show the first band user. If I wanted the last name of the third band user, console log data dot band users, square brackets, the third. One, two, three, two, zero, one, two, the third. I want the data of the third position, the third user. It's two. So we put a two right there. The last name of the third user, dot last name. Again, assuming that there's a bunch of data there, like the previous JSON block. Last name, third. This exercise is just to kind of give us a big idea of how JSON works, how JSON stores data. It's, it's simple text. You just need to know key and value pair. But it can get very complex because you can have a JSON object in a JSON object if you write it the right way. You can then have an array of collections of even more data. All the band users are stored in here because it's an array. All the admins are there. And then subdata upon subdata upon subdata. So this is my schema. This is my 
set up that in this social network app, you have a last name, a first name, an age, and then a person's address. All of that data, just to further illustrate it, would be, would be right here. All of that, the last name, the first name, the age, the address with its associated data, all of that is in the curly braces that I had open the moment that I had simple a moment ago. So here then, this is the, the fourth item. So I'm saying, okay, in our collection of data, go into the band users section, fourth position, one, two, three, four, give me its last name, last name, Alvarez. I would print out Alvarez. Let's tr try to do this. Try to copy that data that we set up a moment ago and put it into you know one of these positions of let's say band user you know I pasted it in there put it in there just so that it, we can do one extra thing um, you know some data this is one user it's the fifth user the fifth band user This user is defined by uh, last name, first name, age, address. I want to add another thing, a profile picture. I want a new field for this user. That last name, first name, age, address, fields. I need a new field. Can you maybe guide me what do I need to do next to add a new field called profile? Based on what we've learned so far, we have the... No, I want to add. I want to keep all of this, but I want to add another field of profile. So I've got a field of last name, first name, age, and address. I want to add a new field of profile. <coughs> well, we've added commas after each field. All of this is one field, address. So a comma after that data so I can add a new field, a new key, a new name, profile pick. So this comma shows that there's more data for that user, profile pick, profile picture. In quotes then, this would be like a location on the web server slash images slash 2017 slash 123.jpg. So this is a reference to a picture on the server, a path to the picture on the server. This JSON file, this data, this database would be on a server and it would point to the location of a picture. Usually we don't really save the data of the picture in the database. We only save the location of the picture in the database. Somewhere in the, in the, in the server, all of the pictures are stored somewhere, and the database just has a reference to where is that picture on the server. So now this profile here has this user, this band user, has a profile picture. It's the last field in this JSON object, so it has no final comma. And you have to remember to add the comma to the previous field.
one way to kind of visualize this also is if I had all of this on one line. Does that make sense there also? Let's write it on one line now. Key and value comma, key and value comma, key and value comma, key and value comma. Key and value. No comma because it's the final one. I had it broken up into multiple lines simply to read it. The computer doesn't care. The computer will ignore the white space and the tabs and the enters and all of that if I write it properly. But for us, for us humans, for, for people, for other fellow developers, the other way was a lot easier to read. Question. Yes, they would be in a different folder. So imagine this JSON file is on a server. And then we've got different folders where the user uploads their, their pictures. We have some system for them to upload, and that is storing their picture somewhere in some other folder. In this case, in the images folder, in the 2017 folder, there is that JPEG. And it's associated with this user, Alvarez. When we uh, played a little bit a while ago with the camera plugin of Cordova, what it's doing is it, it takes a photo, it stores the photo on the memory card, and then we display the photo uh, by having a path to the photo. So same thing here, as we're building to, we're going to take a break in a moment, but as we're building to this, I've given us a bunch of pictures, and eventually we're going to use those pictures in a real JSON file to do something real. Right now what we're doing is simply kind of trying to understand what is JSON. JSON.org gives us the big overview we've seen here. We've created... Uh, we've created objects, we've written string data, number data, object data, array data. We can do true or false or null. We could do those as well. And we're seeing that an object is a collection of curly braces with a string and a value. Not, that shouldn't be string, that should be a, a name and a value. Um, oh, I see, they call it, val uh, they call it string because it has to be a string. So. That is, we've got users, and it's a string plus its value. Admins, string plus its value. Uh, it looks like we cannot have called this, you know, one, two, three, and its value. It looks like the specification, now that I notice it, says that should be a, a string, not a number, and then its value. An array is an ordered list. An array begins with the uh, brackets. Values are separated with commas. So we saw that. There's the array. There's the first value, comma, the second, the third, the fourth, etc. And then we've got objects in each one of those positions. I think that's it for the, for the moment. Uh, this other stuff, you can look at that on your own in a little bit. Let's take our first break. This file that I have here, I'm going to put it in the network folder again. This is not really a valid JSON file. We're going to write a real valid one in a moment. When we come back then, we're going to write some real JSON code uh, to create an interesting uh, little app. So at 7.15, we'll take a break until 7.25.